The second caliph of Islam Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبيين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers of Madani Channel Another episode, another topic, same personality our master, our leader, the second caliph of Islam, Sidra Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu an. Insha'Allah Zawajal, today we will discuss different aspects of Faruq Azam radiyallahu an's greatness, of his brilliance, of his excellence, and see what great personality Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with to be our leader. The topic of our discussion today will revolve around Islam gaining honor, Islam gaining strength, through Farooq Azam radiallahu an subhanallah. So our topic of discussion today will revolve around this very uh, subject uh, inshallah. But before we proceed towards our discussion today, let's first of all listen to the virtue of sending peace and salutations upon the Noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. This hadith is mentioned in Sunan al Nisai, hadith number 1292, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said that Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam humbly said to me, that Allah says, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, are you not pleased with this thing that when your ummati sends salam upon you one time, I send salam upon him tenfold. SubhanAllah, what a great honor this is for us that whenever any of the ummati sends a salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Allah Almighty sends salam upon him tenfold such a great honor such a great virtue we shouldn't stay behind from this dear viewers and we should also send uh, salat and salam as much as we can upon the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam so dear viewers today's topic of discussion is islam gaining strength through faruq azam radiyallahu an and there's so many beautiful accounts in this relation Time wouldn't permit us to uh, go through them in detail, but inshallah, very briefly, we will go through some of the accounts highlighting the fact, understanding that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted Islam strength through Faruqi Azam radiallahu an. The second caliph of Islam, Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an, says that after I accepted Islam, we never worshipped secretively again. We never worshipped hidingly again because remember dear viewers that prior to the embracing of Islam of Faruq Azam radiallahu anh, the Sahaba they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala secretively they would conceal their worship they would hide from others and they wouldn't worship Allah Almighty openly but Faruq Azam radiallahu anh, says that after my embracing of Islam we meaning the Muslims did not worship hidingly and then when Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, uh, accepted Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse, which is verse number 64 of Surah Anfal, where Allah Almighty says, Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu hasbukallahu wa manittaba'aka minal mu'mineen. Meaning, dear Prophet, Allah is sufficient for you and the believers who follow you. And this was the first verse revealed in the Quran in which the Sahaba were referred to with the title of Mu'mineen, of believers, subhanAllah. Now dear viewers, again, we can see that Farooq Azam radiallahu after he embraced Islam, Islam became so strengthened that Muslims did not worship hidingly anymore. And another excellence that the Muslims, they collectively attained over here, the Sahaba, they collectively attained over here, that this very verse, Verse number 64 of Surah Anfal was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was for the first time that Sahaba were referred to as Mu'mineen, as believers. This was again another greatness of Farooq Azam radiallahu an, that for his sake, for his virtue, for the virtue of his embracing of Islam, the Sahaba were referred to as Mu'mineen for the first time. Now after Farooq Azam radiallahu an embraced Islam, 
he constantly upheld the flag of Islam and he would always speak the truth against the disbelievers of Quraysh and Farooq Azam would say that if we were 300 in number then a decision would be made between us and you that whether the rule of Makkah remains with you or it would be with us you will give it to us subhanallah this was the greatness of Farooq Azam another uh, beautiful aspect of this is JVS that Muslims they became uh, secure they became protected, preserved after Farooq Azam embraced Islam. Now, dear viewers, when the first migration took place to Abyssinia, to Habsha, the disbelievers of Quraysh, they sent a delegation to the king of Abyssinia, Najashi, so that they could uh, confuse him, they could relay false news regarding the Muslims who had migrated over there, and so that he could hand those Muslims back to the disbelievers. Now for this purpose, Abdullah bin Abi Rabi'ah and Amr bin As, they were given this responsibility by the disbelievers of Quraysh to go to King Najashi and to convince him to return the Muslims back to them. But Najashi, he sent, sent them unsuccessful, meaning he did not listen to them, he wasn't convinced with them and he let the Muslims stay over there. Now you can imagine dear viewers that the first migration, it took place because it had become very difficult for the Muslims to live in Makkah al-Mukarramah. So how difficult the situation was for the Muslims to stay over there. Now, this delegation of disbelievers of Quraysh goes to Najashi to hold uh, these talks so Muslims could be returned back to them. But Najashi sends them unsuccessful. He doesn't fulfill their request. And these people come back empty-handed. And on the other hand, what happens in Makkah al-Mukarramah now is that Umar bin Khattab عنه, he embraces Islam. He has now become Muslim. Now he عنه, was a person of full of awe and dignity. And he was such a personality that even behind his back, no one could object to him. That is why when Sayyidina Farooq Azam عنه, and Sayyidina Amir Hamza عنه, they embrace Islam because of both of these personalities, Farooq Azam and Amir Hamza the Muslims, they became safe from the evils and tyrannies of the disbelievers of Quraysh. Otherwise, it was a norm, it was a normal custom in those days for Muslims to face tyrannies and evils of the disbelievers of Quraysh for accepting Islam. This was one of the reasons why the Muslims had to migrate to Habsha, to Abyssinia. But when Umar bin Khattab عنه, and the Lion of Allah, Sayyidina Amir Hamza embraced Islam, now the Muslims, they were saved from the tyrannies and from the evil of the uh, disbelievers of Quraysh. They could not dare to openly oppress the Muslims in the same way as they used to prior to the acceptance of Islam of Umar bin Khattab عنه, and Sayyidina Amir Hamza عنه. So Islam gained strength when uh, Farooq Azam embraced Islam and the Muslims, they were also uh, secured upon the acceptance of Islam of Farooq Azam Abdullah bin Mas'ud says that when Amir al-Mu'mineen Sayyidina Farooq Azam accepted Islam, then us, meaning the Muslims, became honored. Farooq Azam was, was that personality that his acceptance of Islam made other Muslims honorable as well. Because of them, other Muslims were also looked up with honor, with respect, with dignity. In another narration, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud says that the acceptance of Islam of Farooq Azam was victory, meaning that as soon as he accepted Islam, it was as if the Muslims had attained a great victory. This was how the feelings were, the sentiments were at that time. That when Umar bin Khattab عنه, embraced Islam, it felt as if the Muslims have gained a great victory. This is how it felt at that time. These were the emotions, the sentiments of the Muslims. And then Abdullah ibn Mas'ud carries on to say that his migration, the migration of Farooq Azam was aid, was help, and his rule, his caliphate was mercy. And he further says that as long as he عنه, had not embraced Islam, as long as he had not become Muslim, then none of us had the courage 
the strength to go in Kaabatullah and offer Salah. And when he embraced Islam, he fought with the disbelievers and be offered Salah in Kaabatullah. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Suhaib radiallahu narrates that Amir al Mu'mineen Sayyidina Faruqi Azam radiallahu as soon as he embraced Islam, then we sat around the Kaaba and we performed the tawaf of it. Subhanallah. So this was the eminence of Faruq Adam radiallahu an, that how Islam gained strength upon his acceptance of Islam. How Muslims, they became secure after Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an, accepted Islam. The Muslims, they felt as if they found a great victory They've gained a great victory. This was the personality of Faruqi Azam radiallahu an, and this was the great favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the Muslims when Faruqi Azam radiallahu an accepted Islam. The fourth caliph of Islam, the lion of Allah, Sayyidina Ali al Murtaza karramallahu ta'ala wa jahul karim narrates that until Faruqi Azam radiallahu an had not embraced Islam, we were not given the title of mu'mineen, of believers. And as soon as Faruq Azam radiallahu an embraced Islam, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted us the honorable title of Mu'mineen, of believers. As was mentioned in the narration earlier, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verse number 64 of Surah Anfal when Faruq Azam radiallahu an embraced Islam. And in this verse, the Sahaba were referred to with the title of Mu'mineen, with the title of Believers. And Mawla Mushkil Kusha, Ali al-Murtaza karramallahu ta'ala wa jahul kareem also mentions in this narration that we were not blessed with the title of Mu'mineen until Faruq Azam radiallahu had not embraced Islam. And once he did, once he became a Muslim, then we were blessed with the title, with the honorable title of Mu'mineen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the honorable title of Believers, subhanAllah. So today we talk about being believers, we talk about um, the mu'mineen, this very title, this very term, this very honor is given to us again for the sake of Faruq Azam radiallahu an. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu narrates that when Faruq Azam radiallahu an embraced Islam, when he became Muslim, then the polytheists, the disbelievers, they became sad and they said that today we've become half. Today we've been reduced to half. This was their sentiments, their emotions. So earlier on, we looked at the emotions, the sentiments of the Muslims that upon the acceptance of Islam of Faruq Azam radiallahu an, they, they're saying that it is as if we've gained a great victory. And the disbelievers, they're saying that we have been reduced to half. Look at the great contrast we see in the emotions, the sentiments of both the sides, the believers. Yes, now Faruq Azam radiallahu has embraced Islam. So now the title of believers have been, has been given to the, to the Muslims, to the Sahaba. So on one side we have believers, on the other side we have non-believers. So the believers, they became joyous, they become excited, they become happy upon the acceptance of Islam of Faruq Azam radiallahu as if They've gained a great victory. On the other hand, what is the state of the polytheists, of the disbelievers, the non-believers? They're thinking that they've been reduced to half by the acceptance of Faruq Azam radiallahu an. So on one side, the acceptance of Islam was strength for Islam. It was encouragement for the believers. But on the other hand, it was a great cause of discouragement for the disbelievers, a great cause of sorrow for Shaitan al rajim and for the disbelievers. Sayyidina Suhaib radiallahu an narrates that after Faruq Azam radiallahu an embraced Islam, we used to challenge, we used to face the kuffar, the disbelievers fully, meaning we used to combat them, we used to challenge them, we used to face them or retaliate against their oppressions fully. And this courage again the Muslims they attained because of Faruqi Azam radiallahu embracing Islam. Sidra Usama bin Zaid radiallahu narrates that Faruqi Azam radiallahu he said it himself that whenever I would see any Muslim bearing difficulties in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then I would say that what is this? That other Muslims they bear difficulties in the way of Allah Almighty they are being told off 
but yet I've been deprived of this privilege. But yet I'm deprived of this, of this privilege. Look at the mindset of Faruq Azam radiallahu and that he had this desire to bear difficulties in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he would see someone, any Muslim, going through the difficulties in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what he would say to himself, that what is this? Are the Muslims, they're bearing difficulties in the path of Allah Almighty. They're being told off, and yet I'm deprived of this privilege. He mentions facing difficulties in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a privilege. Can you imagine, dear viewers? This was the mindset of Faruq Azam radiallahu This was the desire of Faruq Azam radiallahu This was the courage that he radiallahu anh had. As dear viewers, you need to have a big heart, create courage to have this kind of desire as well that you should be facing difficulties in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because these individuals, they knew what it means to bear difficulties in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They knew that what great reward there is in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bearing difficulties in the path of Allah Almighty. This great reward, this world, these difficulties, they're temporary, but the reward that they will get upon it is forever, that is everlasting, that will be recorded in the Book of Deeds. This was their mindset, whereas what is our state nowadays, a smallest of the issues, a smallest of the issues come in front of us and ma'adallah, we leave our salah, astaghfirullah. Smallest of the issues come and we don't do our um, obligatory acts, we don't perform our obligatory acts, ma'adallah. This is what our courage is nowadays. But look at the likes of Faruq Azam radiallahu What a great legacy they've left for us that they themselves chose to bear difficulties in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yet, look at their humbleness out of humility. Whenever they saw someone else bearing difficulties in the path of Allah Almighty, what is he saying? That yet I've been deprived of this privilege. It doesn't mean that he radiallahu did not face any difficulty in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't mean that. Of course, there were so many difficulties that he radiallahu also went through. We covered that in our last episode where, where we talked about uh, the disbelievers of Quraysh oppressing him, beating him, so on and so forth. But out of humility, what is he saying? That other Muslims, they bear difficulties in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet I'm deprived of this privilege. So, this is something that we need to learn from the seerah. One of the things that we need to learn from the seerah of Faruq Azam radiallahu an, that bearing difficulties in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the chosen servants of Allah consider this to be a privilege for themselves. This is how the psychology of their, um, of their lives revolve. This is what they make themselves accustomed to. And this is what they consider um, a privilege for themselves. But when it comes to ourselves, we want all the peace and luxuries and comfort, no difficulty at all. But yet even in the midst of peace and comfort and luxury, we are so, so, so far away from thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from paying gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from fulfilling our obligations that Allah Almighty has stipulated upon us. But yet, look at the likes of Faruq Azam radiallahu who despite facing so many difficulties in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of humility, still says that I've been deprived of this privilege. Allah Akbar. So dear viewers, we need to understand that no matter how hard a difficulty is, how hard a calamity is, how hard a, a hardship is, never move away, deviate from the right path, from the path of Islam. No matter what happens, we are not having to face the same types of difficulties which the Sahaba had to. Today, we have to sacrifice our time, we have to sacrifice our carnal desires, our nafs. We have to make sure that we offer five times daily salah. We have to make sure that we fulfill our obligatory acts. We need to give our time. Just this much of an effort is required from us. But yet, we fall prey to the traps of Satan, accursed. This shouldn't happen, dear viewers. We should also have the determination in us for the sake of Faruq Azam radiallahu anh, that whatever challenges come to us, whatever challenges we face, we will never deviate from the right path. Now, coming back to the topic, we're talking about Faruq Azam radiallahu anh and how Islam gained strength through Faruq Azam radiallahu anh, how the Muslims, they became secure when Faruq Azam radiallahu anh accepted Islam. Now, another beautiful excellence of Faruq Azam radiallahu anh, dear viewers, is that Islam itself will shake hands with Faruq Azam radiallahu anh on the Day of Judgment. 
Allahu Akbar. Imagine, imagine this honor and this excellence. Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Hassan radiallahu anh narrates that on the day of judgment, Islam will arrive. And the creation of Allah Almighty will look at it attentively to the extent that it, meaning Islam, will approach Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an. It will hold his hand and ascend in the middle part of the arsh. Then it will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, O oh my Lord Almighty, I was concealed, I was hidden and weak. He revealed me, he made me apparent, thus grant him full recompense. Listening to this, angels will come from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will hold the hand of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an, and they will enter him in paradise. Whereas people will be engaged in accountability at that time. Allahu Akbar. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, look at the honor given to Farooq Azam radiallahu an. Look at the greatness of Farooq Azam radiallahu an. That on the day of judgment, Islam itself will come. It will come to Farooq Azam radiallahu an. It will hold the hand of Farooq Azam radiallahu an. Ascend in the middle part of the arsh and say to Allah that, Oh my Lord, Oh my Rabb, Oh my Allah, I was concealed, I was hidden. I was weak and he made me apparent, he made me revealed. This again alluding to the fact that I wasn't known. You were not worshipped openly prior to the acceptance of Islam of Farooq Azam radiallahu anhu. He made me revealed. So when Farooq Azam radiallahu anhu accepted Islam, then the companions, the Sahaba alayhi radwan, they worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala openly. And we've also covered how Islam gained strength, how Sahaba became secured upon the acceptance of Islam of Farooq Adam radiallahu an. And upon these words, angels from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would come, hold the hand of Farooq Adam radiallahu an, and enter him in paradise when rest of the people, they will be engaged in accountability. They will be giving account of their deeds. Allahu Akbar. This is the, the eminent grandeur of Farooq Azam radiallahu an, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with. And it was uh, through him that Islam gained such great strength. Islam gained such great renown and acclaim amongst others that now the Sahaba, they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala openly. The fear they had previously was not there anymore. The embracing of Islam of Farooq Azam was as if Muslims have attained a great victory. Whereas the disbelievers thought that today we've been reduced to half. This was the impact of Farooq Azam acceptance of Islam. Allahu Akbar. The Muslims are thinking a whole victory has been gained. And the disbelievers are thinking that we've been reduced to half today. Just because one personality, one individual accepted Islam. And that was the second Caliph of Islam. Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu an. There's so much to talk about, dear viewers. So much to talk about how Islam was honored, how Islam gained strength through Farooq Azam radiyallahu an. But the time doesn't permit us to carry on. These were just a few accounts where we spoke about the greatness of Farooq Azam radiyallahu an from the perspective of how Islam was strengthened through Farooq Azam radiyallahu an. How the Muslims, the Sahaba, they were protected and secured when Farooq Azam radiyallahu an embraced Islam. And how saddened the disbelievers became after Farooq Azam radiallahu embraced Islam. This was all because that was the, the awe of this great personality, the fear that he possessed in the hearts of the disbelievers. And again, if you think about it, all these excellences, all this greatness, whatever Farooq Azam radiallahu possessed, this great grandeur that he possessed, he used it all for the uplifting of Islam. He used it all for the sake of Islam. So if we also have some kind of ability, if we also have some kind of talent that Allah Almighty has given us, we should use it for the uplifting of Islam, for the spreading of Islam, for the propagation of Islam, as everything that is given to us is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So 
Faruq Azam radiallahu anhu, he used everything of his, all his excellences, all his grandeur, all his awe, whatever he possessed for the uplifting of Islam, for the uh, hoisting the flag of Islam high. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah Almighty shower his choices of mercies and blessings upon our leader, our master, the second caliph of Islam, Umar, Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, and may Allah Almighty forgive us without accountability and admit us in paradise as well, without accountability for his sake. Ameen. Mijahi khatam in Nabiyyin. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The second caliph of Islam. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu.